Hey view devs, welcome back to LearnView. In today's video, we're going to be taking a look at seven ways to improve your V4 loops and write more efficient, concise, and readable code. If you've done any work in Vue, then you know how essential V4 loops are to creating your template code. To keep it short, they allow you to write for loops in your template code, which is amazing for things like rendering arrays or lists, and even iterating through an object's properties. Although they're simple to use, there are so many ways that you can be making sure that you're writing code that follows Vue's best practices. So the first tip is to always use keys in your v4 loop. This is a common best practice that most Vue developers already know, but by setting a unique key attribute in your v4 loop, it ensures that your component and your loop works the way that you'd expect. If you don't use these keys, Vue will try to make the DOM as efficient as possible. And this means that certain elements may appear out of order, or maybe your elements won't update when your data does. If we have a unique key reference on each element, then we know exactly when things change and better predict how the DOM will act. The second tip is that we can use v4 to loop over a range. While most of the time we use v4 to loop over an array or an object, we can easily loop over a range like this. This is useful, for example, if we wanted to create a page system for an online store and we only wanted to show 10 products on a page. This is a simple but very effective tip for v4 loops. Third, avoid using vif inside of your for loops. A common mistake that I used to make is that I was using vif to try to filter the data in my v4 loop. Although this seems intuitive, it causes a huge performance issue because Vue prioritizes a v4 over the vif directive. And what this means is that our component will loop over every element and then check the vif conditional. And this is super inefficient. So let's say we are looping over a huge array with tens of thousands of items, but our vif filters all but three products. Every time we re-render, Vue will have to loop over thousands of items, regardless if these three specific products changed or not. And the next two tips are going to be alternatives to joining a v4 with a vif. So the fourth tip is instead of joining a v4 with a vif, to use a computed property or a method instead. So first, a computed property would look like this, where we're actually doing our filtering in our script and iterating only over the products that match our conditional. So now our template will only re-render when one of those products on sale changes, as opposed to using a vif, when it would re-render every time products change. We can also get the same functionality by using a method that has a pretty similar filter. Another alternative to joining a v4 with a vif is if we're trying to decide whether or not to render a list at all. For example, if we only want to render a product list when a user is logged in, you might want to code like this. But even here, we're still looping over all of the products, even if a user isn't logged in. To fix this, we can easily change that vif on being with the element with the v4 to the element wrapping the v4, so our unordered list. So now if the user is not logged in, the v4 loop will not run at all. The sixth tip is how to access the index inside of our v4 loop. In addition to looping over an array and accessing every element, we can also keep track of the exact index of every item. All we need to achieve this is add an index value after our item inside of our v4. It's that simple. And this is super useful for things like pagination, showing rankings, maybe displaying the exact order of the list. It can all be done using this index. And then our final tip is iterating over an object. So far in this video, we've only really looked at using v4 to iterate through an array but we can just as easily iterate over an object's key value pairs. Similar to accessing an element's index, we have to add more than one value to our v4. So if we only want to iterate over all of the object's items, we can just run a v4 with a single argument. But if we add another argument, we'll get both the items and the keys. And if we add a third argument, we can get the items, keys, and index inside of our v4 loop. So depending on the data you need, for example, if you're showing a table or something, this could be a great way to iterate over an object. So that's all for this video. I hope that some of these tips taught you some new best practices about using Vue's super amazing v4 directive. If there's any other tips that you have, let me know down in the comments and I'll be sure to check them out. But as always, don't forget to like and subscribe if you enjoyed the video. It really helps out the channel. And until next time, happy coding.